Are you looking to streamline or optimize your writing process? Would you like practical tips and tools so you can produce better quality content in a fraction of the time? Well, you're in luck. This is the first podcast episode of three covering how to write and publish faster while maintaining good quality, obviously. So make sure you stay tuned. Learn how to publish books and build your author business with award-winning author and self-publishing consultant, Dale L. Roberts. This is the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast. Over the past couple of months, our sponsor, Miblart, has contributed to Stellar Cover Designs, is now looking to give away, yeah, give away a premium cover design package worth $700. It's our biggest giveaway to date. You can enter for your chance to win at dalelinks.com slash giveaway. So enter now. Enter daily and share it with another author who might appreciate it too. Also, for premium graphic design for authors, use my preferred company in Miblart. Get 10% off when you use Dale10, that's one zero, when you visit my affiliate link at dalelinks.com slash Miblart. That's M-I-B-L-A-R-T, dalelinks.com slash Miblart. Again, don't forget about that code, Dale10. Let's get into 20 of the best author productivity tools, tips, and hacks that'll help you produce quality content faster and sell more books. And boy, I really try to keep all of my podcasts under 20 minutes. It seems to be the sweet spot for a lot of people, but I might go a little bit over today because obviously with 20 points, there's a lot to cover. So get ready, get your notes out because I'm gonna fire off a lot of them. We're gonna be going right at a good rapid pace, starting out with number one, set clear goals. Oh man, people that don't like to set goals are probably just like, nah, I've heard enough, but hear me out. Define your writing goals, whether it's word count, chapter completion, or even specific milestones, or in some instances, if you're not really great at writing, you can always just set a little bit of time aside, which I'm going to get to that one here in a little bit. Having a clear target keeps you focused and motivated. Here's the thing about goals. This is why I tell people they should get goals when they're trying to write and trying to put things out. How do you know you're going to be able to hit your target if you have your eyes closed or have a blindfold on? If you're wanting to accomplish anything in any walk of business, having at least rough goals set out is going to be better than nothing at all, because otherwise you're just flying blind and hoping for the best. Again, I wouldn't go into a bar and blindfold myself and throw darts in there, because chances are very likely I'm not gonna hit that dartboard and there's gonna probably be some unhappy people if I happen to hit them by accident. Number two, time blocking. I know I kind of hinted at this before. Allocate specific time blocks for writing editing and other tasks. You notice I said writing, editing, and other tasks because I put all this stuff together. Stick to this schedule to ensure dedicated and dedicated, I mean really focused on your writing. So that way you avoid any of those distractions. Now, as far as me committing my time, I always look at my schedule and think about throughout the course of the day, what do I have? Do I have appointments? Do I have to do social media posts? Do I have an interview that I have to attend to? Do I have to do writing? Make writing a part of your schedule because otherwise it's going to end up getting bumped off. And that's not a good thing. Trust me, I know through experience. Number three, my favorite one by far is the Pomodoro Technique. Now, this is a case where you work in short bursts of focused writing, typically 25 minutes at a time, followed by a five minute break. And after four cycles, you take a longer break of about 15 minutes. Now that's not too bad. You're looking at four cycles, all that. It's gonna be about two hours in total. I use this specific technique when actually I was live streaming the writing of my book, Amazon Keywords for Books. I was uh, shooting for writing a book within 24 hours and I was able to do it within 11 hours. Go figure, that specific title has gone on to win five different awards. All because I kept myself focused and Pomodoro Technique is one of those that I can really say that's what helped me. The technique enhances productivity, and it also prevents burnout. I find that whenever I have that 25 minute timer and I think to myself, okay, I've got five minutes ahead of me here. I wanna try to crank in as much as humanly possible and I get to it. Whereas if I don't put a timer on at all, 
I kind of get up and I'll spend time with my cats or trim my toenails or something other, you know, things like that. You know, that's obviously not good. All right, let's move forward. We're talking about time-based things. So why not we talk about number four being writing sprints. Engage in timed writing sprints. Now, I like to use the Pomodoro technique. That's one of my favorite ways. Now, there are other people that like their own timed writing sprints. You're just going to be challenging yourself to write as much as you can within a specific time frame. And again, I've actually used this time and again, but if you're kind of saying to yourself, okay, I can do writing sprints on my own, Dale, fantastic. But I almost always find that when somebody else is doing it, there's just that feeling of collaboration, that feeling of community that I have. So what I typically do will, I go onto YouTube and I'll just type in live writing sprints. And then I'll hit the filter. So that way it goes to only live videos. So then it shows me all these various different channels. And I found some really good gems over on YouTube. Some streamers that honestly probably have less than a hundred subscribers, but I enjoy going over and working with them and writing sprints. Now you can also check out a resource that actually SD Houston hooked me up with. It's an author tube, you know, um, writing sprint playlist of sorts. It actually is different channels based on different days and different times that are available for writing sprints. Go check that out over at dalelinks.com slash writing sprints. It's a free Google spreadsheet. So don't think that, you know, you're going to get upsold or anything else like that. It just makes it easier for you if you don't want to go through the whole hassle of searching things out. Uh, all these links, by the way, of some of the products and, uh, features like I just mentioned that will be of course inside the show notes. Number five, dictation software. Now consider using dictation tools to write while speaking, which can increase your writing speed and help you generate content more quickly. Now, big shout out to a good friend of mine, two time guest here of the channel, Nick Thacker. He actually has an entire course devoted to it. In fact, one of the best courses I've seen about voice dictation and I've done voice dictation prior to that. But when I actually went into his course, it showed me how to be a lot more more efficient and some other tools that he actually used to pump out some fantastic fiction books himself. Now, you can always use things like Dragon Naturally Speaking, or you can use a transcription service like Rev, or you know, you can even do something that's automated through services like, um, oh gosh, Descript, I think is one of them. Now, what I've used in the past was just my phone and Google Docs. And literally all I did was open up Google Docs, I hit the microphone feature, and then I just started talking. You have to remember though, when you're doing voice dictation, it's a little different than transcription, because in transcription, you can have a transcriptionist enter all of the different punctuation and, and you know, uh, different paragraphs and the formatting, whereas with voice dictation, you actually have to sound it out. Like, you know, if you want to go to the next line or hit an enter, you say, next line. Or if you want to have a comma place there or a period or exclamation point, you actually have to verbally say it's going to feel weird at first, but after a while you'll get used to it. And then before long, you'll be having normal conversations where you're punctuating with people and they're thinking you're pretty crazy. No, just kidding. Number six, distraction free writing. Now you can utilize distraction free writing apps or modes to minimize interruptions and stay focused solely on your writing. Now that's easier said than done. There are many apps out there that will allow you to write distraction free. I know there is one within my community and I tried to look it up before I went on the broadcast today and it completely slipped my mind. So my apologies to that community member that actually put this together. It was really neat. He actually had like music playing in the background and it's 100% free to people. Now for me, I find distraction free writing is typically if I can just remove myself out of my office and I'll typically go over to my favorite place. It's called $2 Radio Headquarters. They're actually a small indie publishing house that runs a vegan restaurant over in uh, the German Village District here in Columbus, Ohio. And I'll take my tablet along. Yeah, my Amazon Fire tablet. Now you're probably saying, Dale, you could probably still search things up. That's true. I can probably still be distracted, especially you're going into something like that. But for whatever reason, I put myself into that environment and I'm cranking out word after word there. It helps out and also it removes the fact that I have three monitors here in, in, in my office. I've got two different computers. I've got all this technology and I have my two cats, me 
If I get out of the house and I go to $2 Radio headquarters, I treat myself to some great food and some awesome tunes that they play in the background, and I just crank out word after word. Number seven, use writing prompts. Overcome writer's block by using writing prompts to kickstart your creativity and get into a flow. Between free generative AI tools, countless free online resources, and more books with writing prompts than you could ever use in a lifetime, you've got inspiration within a few clicks. Number eight, mind mapping. Now, use mind mapping tools to visualize, visually, easy for me to say, to visually organize your ideas and plot points before starting your process. Uh, Plotter is one option that I've heard of. Many people have referred to it many, many times before. I've yet to use it. It's spelled P-L-O-T-T-R. I have no affiliation. I don't have a link to them or anything else like that. I'm sure you can Google them up. Now, as far as when I'm mind mapping, what I typically do, now to explain what mind mapping is, is it's putting everything together before an outline. You're just dumping everything out that's in your brain and then building it out from there, kind of almost like that old meme of Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where there's the different conspiracies that are linked together. And that's kind of how a mind map works. It gets it to where it gets out of your head and onto a either a digital form or a piece of paper. Me, I like doing pieces of paper for some reason writing it out. It helps me out. Now, number nine, this is one that a lot of people are going to probably poo poo on. It's outlining. <laughs> yep. Stay with me here. Plan your content with a solid outline, helping you maintain a clear direction, kind of like our goals and preventing unnecessary rewrites. Now I totally get it. A lot of you pantsers or also known as discovery writers probably aren't into the idea of outlining. And if you already find that you're going at a pretty good clip, just consider putting together a rough outline. If you get derailed off of that outline at some point or another and you discover that, that your discovery writing is, is going in a completely different direction of that outline, that's totally fine. But I would recommend just trying it out just a little bit because it'll help you go that much faster just knowing what your mileposts are and the direction that you're going. Again, not for everyone, I just want you to think about it for sure. Now, number 10, AI grammar and style checkers. Now, you can use AI-powered tools to review and enhance your writing for grammar, punctuation, and style issues, ensuring high-quality content. Now, I'm not saying that those tools are going to edit your manuscript for you. Obviously, you still need to use a human editor before you go and publish it. But for me, rather than trying to visually go through and find all of my mistakes, because everybody makes mistakes, folks, I just use a good tool like Pro Writing Aid, or there's even other options like ChatGPT, or even the more popular one that's come out here more recently called PseudoWrite. Uh, these options are fantastic. I lean a little bit in favor of Pro Writing Aid. I really do like their new rephrase feature that they have available, and it actually integrates with AI. By the way, they're celebrating their 10 year anniversary with a 25% off select plans for a limited time. Go over to dailinks.com slash Pro Writing Aid if you'd like to get your hands on my favorite tool as well. Number 11, collaborative tools. Now, if working with co-authors or editors, leverage collaborative writing tools that allow seamless sharing and real-time editing. Now, these cloud-based services could be something like Google Docs, Atticus is another option, and a new one due out next week called Dibly Create. Having a seamless process for collaborating removes friction and makes your process fun and easy to work with other people. And after all, it's no fun just to do it by yourself. I know there's a few of you lone wolves out there, but consider working with somebody because it will make it a lot more fun and it also will refine the product that you're putting out there. Number 12, this one kind of ties into the last one, but I feel like it deserves its own step here, cloud storage and syncing. Now store your work on cloud platforms to access your writing from various devices and ensure your progress is always, always, always up to date. It never hurts to have redundancies. I recommend keeping your documents organized. Name each file the same, but include the date which you saved it. So for instance, I'm doing this podcast today on August 21st of 2023. I'd put 082123 as a code at the very end. Yes, you can check the file properties to see when a document was saved, but having the date backed into the file or baked into the file, backed into the file, 
um, it really helps you sort it out so much faster. Again, removing that friction so everything is readily available for you. Number 13, AI content generation. Now explore AI tools that can help with generating ideas, character names, plot twists, and even snippets of text to overcome writer's block. Generative AI is truly the talk of the town lately with many uninformed authors completely dismissing the credibility and use cases of AI collaboration. I'm not telling that you should create all your work with generative AI. I'm merely suggesting you implement one of these tools to optimize your workflow. In the next podcast, I'll be discussing some of the best AI options for authors, so stay tuned for that. Number 14, set realistic deadlines. Uh, break down larger projects into smaller manageable goals with deadlines. I know I probably should have put this up a little closer to goals, but you know, when it comes to something like setting these deadlines, it really gets it to where you, you feel like there's a sense of urgency. Now, how much you sense have that sense is up to you. This approach prevents overwhelm and helps maintain consistent progress. I find that anytime I don't put a deadline, it's usually not gonna get done in a timely fashion. Hate to say it. Number 15, automate social media. You're probably going, wait a second, I thought we we're talking about writing. Yes, I know that there are many authors out there that know that they have to build their author platform online. And so they're going, but Dale, you told me to go do social media. Okay, let's make social media easy for you. So use scheduling tools to pre-schedule so social media posts and announcements, freeing up more time for writing. Pretty cool, right? Social media can be time consuming, so I recommend automating it whenever you have the opportunity. Now, I personally use a service called Content Studio to schedule my posts across Facebook, Twitter, slash X, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and more. Visit dailinks.com slash content studio or Google up your options because a lot of the social media platforms have some type of scheduling systems in place. That's 100% free. Number 16, research efficiency. Now, organize your research materials using tools like Evernote, OneNote, or even MacNotes, making it easier to find the information you need while you're writing. I personally use MacNotes so I can easily update my file, whether I'm using my phone or on desktop. So this is really, really nice tool to have. In fact, Number 17 is digital note-taking. Now capture ideas on the go using note-taking apps on your smartphone, ensuring you never lose a creative thought. Now there are some of you out there that probably don't feel comfortable with that. Maybe get a notebook that you keep by your bedside or inside your back pocket so that way anytime you're walking along, you can make a note. Now again, I love Mac notes, but you can always find what works for you and is most convenient. Number 18, background noise apps. Now, some authors find background noise or ambient sounds conducive to their writing process, and I, for one, am one of those. Experiment with apps that offer calming or creative audio environments. My preferred tool is called Brain FM, and I've even used them in previous years during my writing sprints. For details about Brain FM, visit my affiliate link at dailinks.com slash Brain FM, and actually, I use them for meditation as well. They've got quite a few things inside their stuff beyond just writing, you know, background music and ambient music. Number 19, this is so important, regular breaks. Remember to take short breaks during writing sessions to stretch, move around, and refresh your mind. Breaks can actually improve overall productivity. This is a must for me. All right, I have a terrible back. It is horrible. I'm probably, I, I'm, I'm trying to upgrade it at some point or another. I'm just waiting on like Elon Musk to probably invent a better spine for us. Who knows? It's a joke here, folks, by the way. Um, but I find that the longer I sit, the more that that starts to bug me. And the more that I start having pain coming in here, it starts to interrupt me. And then it starts, stops my entire flow. And then I'm done for the day. That sucks. So I have to give myself breaks and I recommend you do the same thing even if you don't have a bad back. It's great to just keep things fresh. And lastly, number 20, reflect and review. Now, periodically review productivity techniques to identify what's working and what needs adjustment. Adapt your strategies as needed for continuous improvement. No one process will remain the same for you for the rest of your life. You simply need to try something out for about a month or so and then adjust accordingly. 
This is the last call for the Miblar giveaway into for your chance to win a stellar premium cover design package when you visit dalelinks.com slash giveaway. Enter now, enter daily, and share with another author friend who might like it too. Special thanks to our sponsors, Miblar, for their generous contributions. Again, visit dalelinks.com slash giveaway. Remember, folks, the key is to find a combination of tools, techniques, and approaches that resonate with your individual writing style and preferences. While I haven't given you an exhaustive list, you still have 20 options to make you dangerous if leveraged right. All you need to do is pick one item, implement it into your business plan over the next 30 days. If you find success using it, implement another tip and stack the value as you go. Next week, we're going to expand on a topic that's hotly debated amongst the writing community and many authors have waited on me to officially weigh in on it. Artificial intelligence tools for authors. Yeah, we're gonna finally talk about AI. I've kind of danced around it and mentioned it in news segments and things like that, but now we're gonna finally deep dive into something like that. So you wanna make sure that you stay tuned to this podcast till later. This has been Self Publishing with Dale and I'll catch you next week. You've been listening to the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingwithdale.com for more information on how you can level up your self-publishing business. Also, check out our growing video on demand service, chock full of free and premium content, when you head over to theselfpublishinghub.com. If you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a review on your preferred podcasting platform. We thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next episode.